Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Epic's announcement for the Unreal Engine 5. This engine will potentially give us the next generation of video game graphics for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and PCs. There's been a lot of information released for this nearly photorealistic engine that could revolutionise creating games as we know it. So just a bit of background info, the Unreal Engine has actually been around since 1998 and for many many years the Unreal franchise was going head to head with the Quake franchise and their engine. Nowadays most of our video games that we play are actually created with Unreal Engine and I can bet that more than a few games that you've actually played yourselves will have been created with Unreal. Unreal Engine is said to be coming out early 2021 and it is going to have a huge impact on the future of gaming. They recently released a demo and in that demo they've stated that it was running live on PlayStation 5 which in itself is quite amazing. I mean we do all know that consoles have had a hard time keeping up with PCs with their constant upgrades and interchangeable parts. They're creating new better PCs all the time. However this seems to be changing with the new generation consoles which are actually a lot closer to a decent spec PC. They've also stated that games actually created on Unreal Engine 4 will be able to be migrated to Unreal Engine 5. So developers that are creating games right now could be potentially creating games to be used with the Unreal 5 engine. They've also stated that they're going to migrate the insanely popular game Fortnite onto Unreal Engine 5 mid 2021. So Fortnite is about to get a massive graphical change. This engine offers a true generation leap in terms of the density of the details in the game alongside the illumination of LOD pop-ins. Essentially, developers will be able to photo scan rooms, objects and be able to place them in games pretty much like they would look like in real life with every detail added. For example, the typical creation of a game at the moment consists of the use of a limited amount of triangles which keeps down the number of computations for each game detail to be as low as possible to enable our computers to run such elaborate games. They use a rough silhouette of a character and then project higher quality lighting and textures to lower the quality character. These are called maps. They do this to make it look as real as possible. But now with the use of Nanite technology, it allows a developer to use millions of tiny triangles to build virtual geometry that could be identical to high quality real world scanned items down to a sub pixel level, thus making games look like they would in real life. The idea behind this allows the making of games a little bit easier. You will be able to have realistic objects, maps, worlds even in these games thanks to the billions of triangles. Generally speaking you cannot have all these triangles in memory at once but now with the new high powered IO of PlayStation 5 the game will be able to stream these in as you play through it in real time. The engine also boasts a huge jump in terms of lighting in games. Epic's answer to one of the holy grails of lighting, Lumen, which is used in conjunction with Nanite. This is a fully dynamic global illumination which reacts to the scene and light alterations in real time. Most games actually use trickery for lighting by pre-calculating illumination through a specifically made light map. Each object has to have at least one or more of these maps, which is generated offline and essentially baked into the scene using textures. With this, the scene has the illumination but the lights cannot move as this takes up a lot of performance. Essentially, the lights have been added to the object's surface but are in fact static. Other spectacular lighting such as on a metal surface or a water reflection is utilised in a different way. This is done using cube maps or screen space reflections. Lumen, however, is essentially a non-triangle ray tracing based version of bounce light which means it distributes light around the scene after the first hit of lighting. They showcase this in the demo when the sunlight hits the rocks, the statues, bouncing off these, changing its colour making it truer to real life. This makes the light reactive, adjusting in real time to changes in the environment such as a moving object or a flashlight. This is seemingly done regardless of scale, whether it's a small room or a wide open landscape. 
Obviously, with all these improvements, they've also been working on the audio to go along with it. Although they have not touched much on the audio, they have stated that the audio reverberation in virtual spaces is going to be more defined and PlayStation 5 have also been working on a 3D audio that is designed to make you feel like you're actually there. This, coupled with the photorealistic worlds and the new lighting dynamic, make great potential for games of our future. They also showcase their already existing, but fairly new, physics system named Chaos, alongside their particle system, Niagara Visual Effects, and Renderer Ambiosonics Rendering. The demo shows complex particle interactions and interconnectivity. In one scene in the demo, the torchlight drives the particle-driven bugs to scatter the beetles into the darkness as they communicate with each other and understand their environment. And I have to say, even the bugs look hyper-realistic. They also show enhanced flocking behaviours, which allows for much more complex and natural looking background game elements. On the character side, there are new tools which assist with the central gravity of characters, with a new predictive foot placement for walking over complex terrain to make a movement that works with the amazing looking geometry, removing imperfections to give a much more natural walk on the terrain. Also, designers can now seamlessly trigger contextual character animation to allow their characters to lean on, effect or move objects they come close to. Epic's philosophy in providing all of these tools is to make it easier for people to create their game content so they can actually focus on other aspects like gameplay. This new technology is very exciting and has the potential to revolutionise the gaming world as we know it. We have seen such lights before, however, as with Euclidean, which gave us a taste of gaming advancement, which in turn never really made it into the gaming industry. I also feel this video that they released is a little odd, due to the ultra realistic environment, yet the playable character they used in the showcase is very low poly. This makes me think that they may struggle with character animation as Euclidean did. It is still possible, but the animations did look very clunky. I would also like to know more about how the complex collision system handles the new high poly objects, if collision performance is affected by nanite and how. There seems to be a lot of speculation and not many answers regarding the performance on low spec devices such as mobiles and non-modern computers. Will there actually be issues on a lower grade PC? And if so, this means that it will be very limited to games that only run on high-end PCs or next-gen consoles which obviously not everyone is able to get their hands on. Obviously, I don't know if this is going to be the case, it's just my train of thought, but I wanted to put it out there to let you guys know of the possible cons to the UE5 engine. Epic Games have suffered a lot due to statements around exclusivity in the past, so this time they are reiterating that this game engine will have no exclusivity. It can be used on any platform or any console. They've also wavered the Unreal Engine royalties on the first million dollars in game revenue, now the engine has always been free to download and use, but developers have to pay $3,000 per quarter in gross revenue. And if your team has already paid this, Epic have stated that they will refund the difference. So although this royalty fee does still apply, it will largely leave game makers unaffected until they actually hit that $1 million mark. So what this essentially means is that you will be getting all of these awesome new features for free, which is pretty exciting. Obviously, many of us love games, and this new engine could forge a new path for new and exciting creators to utilise the full extent of their imagination whilst making it actually easier to create their games at a much lower cost and risk and we as the gaming community are all for it. So guys, obviously we have a lot of questions and more information is going to be released on the engine over time. They will probably even give developers early access to use this tool. Obviously the big one for me is the use of the low polygon character and the reasoning behind using it in such an ultra realistic demo. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. I hope I've gotten all of the information in this video correct for you guys because obviously I'm not a game developer, but I did want to let you know what's going on with the Unreal Engine 5. Also, let me know what you guys think this means for the world of gaming. I'd like to know your opinions on the demo. Thank you so much for watching and for now, bye!